there's a sergeant. Uh, I, I'm assuming he's retired now and wouldn't mind me telling the story, but I, I promise that this can be um, uh, researched, not on Google, but uh, these people are around because too many of them not to, too many witnesses. <laughs> so this is the opening scene of the movie about the actor prepares. Yeah. So I've spent all this time and I'm, you know, it's interesting. And, I'm, and this guy would let me ride around just with him. And we do warrants. Yeah. You know, he'd say, well, you got a warrant on this guy. You want to do this? You want... So one day we're rolling around and I was wearing a, the, uh, the windbreaker. And I had a, uh, a four inch 38 caliber that I would keep underneath it here. And we, um, we see these guys standing out in front of a van in front of a little house down in, uh, uh, in, uh, um, in the South Central Los Angeles area. And I won't say which color, but they're wearing either red or blue. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, what do you say, we jack them up? The sheriff's office, tactically, they would, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if they still do, but they would either, either you were over the car or down on your knees fingers interlaced and he would be behind and he had them all like that my job was to secure the van that would so there's the house the van the guys so he's one police officer one sheriff's deputy and an actor and so i've got my flashlight again like this and i go per training to the the blind spot which is between the back panel windows and the side panel windows. And I've got the, the light. And I know probably the drugs, you've been told, they're going to be up inside the, the door handle or they're going to be here. And like the night before, I'd also be close. You see, you see a gun, you say gun, right? And I come and I'm going to do what, you, you'll know what this is, but a quick peek, right? So... Nobody's reflexes are fast enough if the wall's here. I can get around here and see what's going on before you're going to be able to pull a trigger or something. Well, I picked the night because I go like this and I go from a blind spot. I do the quick peek and a gun is pointing right in my face. I say, gun. <laughs> now, he has five guys, or about five guys, and they're all proned out facing the street. Or not proned out. They're on their knees. And he can't get out of the line of fire of that van. I'm now back under in cover. He's on his radio and he's, you know, calling the cavalry. And all of the guys, the cavalry who will come, they know, knew me because some of them had been training me. Yeah. And he kicks each of the guys who's on their knees. He kicks them down on the ground because he doesn't want any of the, he hasn't even gotten to search them all yet. And so they're on the ground they're complaining somewhat but they're on the ground his gun is on them and suddenly a lot of police cars are showing up and i'm seeing faces that i know and they're giving me hand signals they want me to what i read is now some time has passed they want me to uh um do one more quick peek because that person could have moved just to identify where, which part of the van, because they got me, they don't want to hurt. Yeah. They got him in the line of fire. So I might now just peek it. And again, this is the 1980s and reconfirm position and get under the van and stay there because we, they got shit to do. Yeah. And now it's daylight. Because now there's a helicopter over this whole right, scene. Right. And I'm like, And I check. And the gun, of course, was still pointing at me because it was my reflection. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> and all of oh, this chaos shit. was because I saw a gun. Oh, shit. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> So you think I got ragged for a little while on that? Oh, shit, that's the fucking greatest. Yeah. And for years, sometimes I'd run into some guy with a mustache. He'd say, you know, <laughs> I was I was a young cop at that time. Uh, I was there that night. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's going to destroy it. I'm never going to let an actor go on a ride along again now that I've oh, given this interview. So fucking good.
it's so <laughs> the good. most humiliating moment anybody could ever have. Wow, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. It's all about how you get back up, John. Yeah, there you go, brother. There you go. Yeah, you you have time for a couple more now. Sure. What do you think about movies today? Like, where do you think we're at now? What's better about show business now? What's worse? Uh, what's the state? Uh, are there truth tellers now? Uh, are there artists right now that you really admire? Um, what do you think about it? Because I, I I just don't know that we, for me at least, from where I sit, and I think of you. And the things that you've done and, and, and of this like generation of, 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 of the greats and my heroes. And I don't really know who's, who else is out there. I, I'm, I'm tremendously uh, worried about it. And mm -hmm. I'm worried about the attention span of the audience. I'm worried about what people, the, the shit that's being made, the shit that I'm reading. Um, I'd just like to know what your thoughts were. Well, okay, let's start with the good stuff. Okay. Right? So... You know, we're sitting here, most certainly, uh, you know, not without Shia LaBeouf and my having stumbled on that great conversation the two of you had, you, you know, the old vodka tonic at night and the, turning on the television. And um, I just saw, have you seen the play that he's going to do? Well, so I think that that's a zone um, that would have been extraordinary at any time in cinema or theater. Mm -hmm. So there are people operating at a really high level. When I mentioned the Stephen Fry thing, you know, part of, he talks about young people being very anxious because they don't know how to operate, how to navigate what they can say, what they can't say. He talks about diversity and that those who are pushing diversity um, are pushing it in a very undiverse way. You, you, you know, you, you can't be diverse in your language, um, your behavior. It's a kind of, you know, I don't want to be necessarily officially associated with a lot of people who maybe in this topic I agree about a lot of it. But um, I, um, I think we're doing ourselves an incredible disservice by thinking in that way, which will make us popular um, amongst the loudest. It's less colorful and it's less challenging. And when things are um, limited in, you know, through the kind of, um, uh, what would you call it, uh, peer pressure and careers at risk um, when people can be pigeonholed as less than um, as easily as today. You're, it's going to affect the movies. It's going to create a, 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 an invisible sense of self-censorship. Um, it's going to decrease the magic and so we're giving the magic to machines. Mm -hmm.